Putin's war risks more global hunger, destabilizing poor countries. Biden administration discusses how to tackle wheat shortage. Any solution to manage the wheat supply will cost billions. President Joe Biden and leaders of the United States' leading allies are exploring how they can prevent Russia's invasion of Ukraine from causing an increase in global hunger as war increasingly disrupts the supply of wheat and other goods from a region known as one of the world's breadbaskets. The prospect of international food shortages will come true, Biden said at a press conference in Brussels on Thursday, following a G7 meeting that addressed the impending crisis and could also lead to political instability in poorer countries. Biden said he urged Europe and other countries to lift trade restrictions that could limit food exports. Last month's invasion by Russian President Vladimir Putin put at risk the exports of wheat, corn, sunflower oil and other foods from Russia and Ukraine, which account for more than 10% of all calories traded worldwide. The rate is even higher in North Africa and the Middle East, which relies heavily on wheat from Russia and Ukraine. According to people familiar with the talks, White House officials had multiple meetings last week with national security, agriculture, development and treasury officials to look for ways to avoid supply shortages and price spikes. At the summit, Biden said he raised the possibility of a significant U.S. investment in food and other humanitarian aid. Biden also said that he and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau discussed ways to increase wheat production and speed up exports in their countries. The disruption to important food supplies has already sparked protests in Iraq over rising food prices, which government officials blame for the Ukraine war. Egypt, the world's largest wheat importer, asked for help from the IMF on Wednesday, as increases in food and fuel prices put pressure on public finances. The fallout is a reminder of the recent massive rise in global food prices that became a catalyst for the 2010-2012 Arab Spring that toppled long-ruling governments in Tunisia, Libya and Egypt. It also sparked Syria's brutal civil war and the resulting refugee crisis in Europe. In Egypt, where government-sponsored bread price increases are politically dangerous, the cost of balancing high wheat prices will be $2.6 billion, or 0.6% of gross domestic product, according to estimates by Joseph Glauber and David Laborde of International Food Policy Research Institute. In Yemen, a country heavily dependent on international aid, the additional cost would be around $840 million, or 3.6% of GDP. Glauber, formerly chief economist for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, said the world has enough wheat and other grains in stock to avoid shortages, but tapping into the reserves will only increase costs. The USDA estimates that the world has enough wheat from previous harvests to meet about one-third of annual consumption, with some stocks held by private traders and some by governments. A U.S. official said the Biden administration has urged countries with government reserves to donate to U.N. humanitarian efforts. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's forecast, Australia and India are expected to increase their wheat exports, driven by high world prices, which will offset half the loss from Ukraine and Russia. It's not a question of extinction, Glauber said. Stocks will pull lower and you'll see higher prices. Still, the cost increases from the war and the consequent sanctions against Russia without action, will push more than 40 million additional people into extreme poverty, defined as living on less than $1.90 a day, according to an analysis published last week. Center for Global Development, a nonprofit think tank whose funders include Bloomberg Philanthropies. The impact of the war comes on top of the economic burden that the COVID pandemic has placed on the world's poor, especially in Africa and Asia. The United Nations Global Food Price Index has increased by more than 40% in the past two years. Mark Lowcock, the former UN Deputy Secretary General and Emergency Aid Coordinator, said billions of dollars in additional food aid would be needed to curb mass hunger in poor countries. In the short term, it could be in the low billions for 2022. In the long run, a lot depends on how much grain production in other countries adapts to compensate for this, he said. These problems can be long-lasting and ugly. The food shock in Ukraine looks devastating. Grain and sunflower oil stored from last year's harvest cannot be shipped due to conflicts and port closures. Bombardment and fuel shortages can hamper spring planting, and fertilizer farmers must resort to winter wheat crops emerging from a dormant state. Infrastructure damage, labor shortages and ongoing conflict can also jeopardize the summer harvest and the shipping of everything produced. Sanctions and disruption of Black Sea shipping routes will also limit Russia's exports beyond grain. Russia, a major global supplier of fertilizers, ordered producers to halt exports earlier this month. 
Russia's ally, Belarus, which is another leading source of fertilizers, is also subject to sanctions. Government efforts to stockpile food could make the situation worse. Hungary, Argentina, Turkey, Serbia, and Egypt have imposed or threatened food exports. Russia is limiting grain exports to some post-Soviet countries, which may be an attempt to control local food prices.